Hey everyone, welcome back, and welcome to my first ever Q&A. A couple weeks ago on YouTube, I put out a post just seeing if you guys had any questions, and you didn't disappoint, and I thought I'd answer them today. So the first question I had is from Josh, and he asked, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel, and what type of content do you enjoy creating the most? And that's kind of a complicated answer. I don't fully know why I started a YouTube channel, other than I was just really interested in recording myself, and I thought it'd be a, you know, kind of a fun way to get better. So I started the YouTube channel quite a few years ago. I didn't really take it seriously or post much. I think I have like some just old videos of me playing through some classical stuff. But really it was a way for me to practice my recording skills and just practice getting better as a player because then I could listen to my recordings after I do them. And what I found out is I tried to post, you know, at least a few videos a month, just kind of constantly. Uh, I used to do a bunch of like kind of rock stuff and full band mixes and things. And I did this for quite a few years before the channel actually started taking off and mostly because I started taking it seriously and posting like you know once a week things like that but basically by doing so many recordings that's how I kind of cut my teeth and got practice you know setting up recording sessions mixing mixing's a big one if you'd mix a video every single week but also just kind of as an artist I like to create things and videos are kind of a different aspect of that so rather than just writing a piece of music I can create a video and because I really like the technological aspect of things, uh, mainly the recording aspect, um, and now the camera side. So that was probably the most fun thing that I learned when I started making videos, is how much I really enjoyed like videography and then later photography. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that I post quite a few pictures. I've gotten into photography lately, but point being is that it's just kind of a fun outlet for creativity that just playing guitar doesn't really give you. Now, as far as like the type of content that I enjoy creating the most, it really varies. I really enjoy performance videos. Those are really fun. Um, but I also really enjoy the recording tutorials because basically one of the reasons that I started posting them is that when I started out, they did not exist. I tried really hard to find good content for recording classical guitar when I was starting out. And you really can't find any outside of like some articles and, you know, I would scour screenshots on like GSI's Facebook page to see how they mic guitars and stuff. It's really hard to find. Um, there just really doesn't exist a good resource for classical guitarists to learn how to record themselves, mix themselves. And that's really one reason why I started the channel. Now, my second question is from Paul, and he asked, do you ever use pedals in combination with classical guitar, uh, specifically the LR Bags acoustic pedals? I really don't, and that's mostly because I don't really play my classical guitar in context of a mix or, you know, with other people. You know, if I was doing like a group thing, I might actually use those. The LR Bag stuff is really great. Um, their pedals are probably some of the best and so are some of their pickups and things. Um, but when I do gigs, and I need to do a video about this, I've kind of been meaning to do this for a while, but when I do like gigs that aren't like straight concerts, you know, meaning I'm like playing like a wedding or a party or what have you, I actually use like an iRig acoustic stage most of the time. It just, it literally looks like a guitar pick. It's about that small. It fits on the sound hole and then it runs basically a, a normal guitar cable into my Fishman amp. And that deserves a video of itself because I just really love Fishman stuff. Like the Fishman amps are like the best thing. Even when I play uh, classical guitar concerts, like actual sit down concerts that are in places that are a little bit too big for my guitar to be heard, I love having that amp on stage because it just provides a little bit of reinforcement. And honestly, most of the time people ask me, you know, was the amp even on? They just kind of hear a classical guitar. And I really love that because it kind of preserves the tone of the guitar and doesn't sound really tinny and fake that I think like a most acoustic amps kind of sound like. So that's kind of my opinion on that. And that really does deserve another video that I, I think I'll try to put out in the next few weeks. So Juan asks, how did you approach acoustic treatment for classical guitar in my home studio? That is a complicated question because in my old home studio, I mostly used these really thick, uh, basically foam panels, like the ones you see behind me, they're about four inches thick or so. And in the old place, I really couldn't modify the walls and I didn't really want to drill in and mount, you know, really heavy wooden panels that have like fiberglass insulation. So I basically used those. And really what that does is it takes away flutter echo. I think for most people that don't want to go crazy on their home studio thing, what you can do is try to just dampen the sound so that when you clap in the room, you don't hear that really annoying fluttering sound or that pingy sound in between your recordings. So when you're playing, you want to kind of position yourself in the room to avoid that. Uh, if you don't have anything like that, you can use like bed sheets, you can use pillows, uh, you know, basically, you know, if you're in a carpeted room, it's even better, but try to deaden the room sound as much as humanly possible. If you're in a home studio, you really shouldn't concern yourself with trying to have like an acoustically perfect space. 
basically you just want it to sound dead. So that way when you add reverb and things, it doesn't sound like you're recording in a tiny room, but also in a cathedral at the same time. And that's basically how I approach it. Now in the future, probably the next couple months or so, I'm really hoping that I can outfit this studio with some more substantial acoustics, and then I can get you guys a video specifically on that, which I think will really help you guys out. So my final question is from Andreas, and he asks, how would I go about miking a guitar duo? How many mics would I use? And how would I pan the tracks? So that's a really good question and kind of a series that I'd like to get into in the future is not just miking solo guitar, but how I would mic multiple guitars. And the short answer for that is if I was going to do a duo, I would basically use one mic per person. Now you could record the entire thing with just a stereo pair. That sounds great. I recorded an entire EP like that. But the problem is, is that if you're only recording with two mics kind of in a stereo pair away from the players, you're really locked into the balance. Like you as a group need to be perfect. The problem was is when I recorded my EP, I have a double top. My uh, duet partner did not. He had a more traditional guitar. So I was basically always louder. So in the mixing phase, I kind of had to turn my channel down, turn his up a little bit, and that kind of helped compensate. So you kind of have to think about that while you're recording. What I would recommend though, and what I've done in the past, is instead of using a stereo pair for basically the entire group, use one mic per person. So if you're recording a duo, you're recording a quartet, use a single mic on each person. And then if you have the inputs in your interface, use a stereo pair in the room to capture the ambience. So that way you can turn each person up, you get a little bit more depth and bass in the instruments, but you also have that acoustic depth of having a stereo pair that captures the sound of the group as a whole, which is also a crucial part of the recording unto itself. So basically I had to sum it up, I would mic each person separately and then maybe use either a single room mic or a stereo pair room mic in the room. And that's pretty much how I'd record that. So yeah, that pretty much covers it. I'd really like to thank you guys for all the input and all of the support that you've given the channel over the last year. It's grown tremendously and it's pretty amazing. So really, I'd just like to thank you guys for all of that. And as always, if you do have any more questions, comments, or anything you want me to cover in future videos, leave them in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.